charger? Yes. She's here to get convinced to go electric. Oh. And we're filming to do the story. And she's got some questions that I figured you'd be able to answer. Some questions. I'll try to give some decent answers. Please. This is Jacqueline Mayor Lacey. Uh, she drives a high performance Hemi Dodge. Good looking car. And she's here to get her questions answered <clears throat> about going electric. And Charlie Garlo is here, Delaware Green Drinks, Divas, Car Club, Delaware Car Club. Um, very intelligent guy, walks the walk, and we'll let you take the questions. Talks the talks and drives the jive. <laughs> is your car considered high performance, like go fast kind of car? Well, I don't think that his principal idea of this vehicle is to be high performance. It's fuel efficient and very nice, very smooth, very quiet. Uh, saves money, those sorts of things. But it's, as you can see, a smaller subcompact car, which doesn't advertise itself as being at the point. Although I'll tell you, when I'm in a lane and I want to switch over this way, I pump the pedal and zip, I get a lot of zing out of this baby. So it's a hybrid? It's because a hybrid it car and it has a gasoline tank and a small gasoline motor, and it has the electric motor and the electric batteries. But I've, heard, I've never used the gasoline motor to drive this car because the 150 miles of range of electric range that I have in this car takes me most everywhere I want to go. So I've never had an opportunity this AG. Now it's time to switch over to gasoline because I'm out of electricity. So that, that was going to be my next question. Do you run on the electric more than the gasoline? So you, you answer the that all, the, all time. the time. Unless, of course, maybe sometime I would go too far and I didn't find a charging spot or something like that. In which case, the gasoline is there to back me up. How often does that happen? I have, in the last two years that I've owned this, three years that I've owned this car, I have never used the gasoline motor to propel the vehicle. Have you had trouble finding charging stations you know, when you need them? Not really. There's an app for that, you know. And it's right. on my cell phone, my uh, iPhone. And I know pretty much where <laughs> things are in Delaware, and that's where I do most of my driving. Yeah. Sometimes I drive over to BM, uh, BWI Airport in the Baltimore Airport, and I know where the charging stations are along that route. But if I were to drive to California or something, I would be able to figure out where the charging spots are also. Because there's an app for that. But because the app has all these things listed, and if you're smart enough to plan ahead a little bit, which it requires a little thinking, then you can get where you want to go. I mean, look at Elon Musk. He took his Tesla and his four kids that he had at that time and drove across the United States in a Tesla. And how did he do it? He stopped at all the Tesla charging stations. And he didn't have any problem. He didn't have any problem getting there. So that, that was one of the questions was, you know, if, if you have a problem finding charging stations anywhere across the country, but... Right. Well, there probably are some out-of-the-way spots where it's difficult to get charging. Uh, in which case, uh, it may not be on the app, but there's a big, you know, sort of dead spot in there. But uh, it's not like you're going to say, gee, there's a dead spot. I'm going to drive into the middle of it and see if I can get out. You would try to plan your trip so that you're not going to be get out of fuel on the side of the road. And pay attention. Right. right, because if you have total electric, then you, you do have no choice. So you well, have the choice. I will point out that there are more plugs on the sides of buildings around America for electricity than there are gasoline stations. Very good, because you can plug in anywhere. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to go to a charging station at the yeah. gas stations yeah, and the hotels. A socket you can stick in for your lamp or whatever, you know, 110 voltage. So but it, it's a little slower there than it is if you go to a charger that's 240 volts, which charges you faster. They give you the instant charge. Right. But if you're, you know, in the mood to sit and have a beer while you're plugged in and charging up, uh, that's okay. And do they charge you at the charging stations? Well, that's an interesting question. A lot of businesses now have set up charging stations for 240 volts, which is faster than a wall socket. Mm -hmm. And they will give the electricity away for free. Why? Because they say to themselves, and it turns out this way, that people will say, golly, I'm getting free electricity. I may as well stick around to get a whole lot more of that free electricity. Meanwhile, what will I do? I'll go shopping in this place over here, and they end up spending 120 bucks on a necklace for their wife or something, you know. <laughs> and so the store makes out, the shopping mall makes out, and the electricity that they're giving away for free is very inexpensive. Electricity costs about one third or maybe a quarter of the cost of gasoline to go the same distance. So electricity, very cheap. 
They can give it away and still make a problem. It's kind of a no-brainer, right? Yeah, I think so. Now, some places will charge you for it, especially the super-fast chargers, because that's a larger mechanism handling more power and thicker cables and all those things cost them a little more. So most every um, supercharger that I've been to does charge you for the electricity. You have to have one of these little cards, you know, the, like a credit card size, and you swipe it, and then the electricity will flow. So uh, I've used those on occasion. They're, they're great, and they're not very expensive either. How much do they charge, like, as opposed to our, what are we paying now, Two ninety nine or 3 a gallon right now? Right. I think that if you translate the uh, electricity cost from the charger into the sort of gallons that you might get to take it the same distance, mm -hmm. the answer is it's about 2 to $2.50 per gallon in electricity costs. Because if I fill up this car, for example, or the, or the Chevy Bolt that I also own, it's, I'm getting a little bit lost on my numbers, translating from one to another here, mm. but you figure that it's going to take uh, how many kilowatt hours of electricity to get you the 200 miles, and that's probably going to be kilowatt hours. Uh, that's four kilowatt, four miles to a kilowatt hour, so that's 50 kilowatt hours you will need. And 50 kilowatt hours normally cost five dollars of electricity to go 200 miles. But how much does gasoline cost you to go 200 miles? If you get maybe 25 miles to the gallon, you're going to be using eight gallons, eight times the going price for like gasoline is three dollars a gallon, more or less. Eight times three, 24 dollars to go that same distance on gasoline. Does that help? I don't know <laughs> I was confusing you. Uh, with the yeah, I'm horrible with math, but yeah, I think it's a savings. It's $5 for the gasoline versus $24 or $25 for the, $5 for the electricity versus $25 for the gas. For the gas, yeah. By that quick calculation. Now, the folks who are trying to sell you and will sell you super fast charging, they'll put a premium on top of that $5. So that I probably paid ten dollars for the electricity from one of the super fast chargers it'll fill me up in a half an hour they count on that everybody's in a hurry so that's right you're but gonna want, want to the get instant charge right now and keep going right. so. i would want the instant charge it's like come on hurry up i gotta go right now you were asking earlier about uh, super performance high performance cars and of course the queen of the ball in high performance electric cars is the tesla they've got they blow the doors off of all the other hot rod cars in the gasoline world ferraris lamborghinis all those kind of guys lose yeah. when racing against the tesla now i don't know that this car behind me or that one over there is going to beat the tesla i suspect not but they're yeah. pretty good performance my question with that is, do they keep the performance as your batteries are getting low and uh, when they're depleting? That's a good question. Right. If the batteries get low, that is to say that over time batteries may wear out a little bit, you most likely see a, a reduction in the range that you can go. Instead of going 300 miles on a charge, you'll go 280 or 260 or something mm -hmm. like that. But you will probably still have the same sort of acceleration until you get you know, a lot low. And then you'll notice performance doesn't keep up. Right, because some give a warning, some just, right. they're done. Yeah. Is, is that true? Like some just shut off well, when they're done? Well, if you run completely out of electricity on a nice fresh battery pack, it'll shut off because you ran out of electricity, just as if you ran out of gasoline mm -hmm. you're on this side of the road going, what am I going to do? But if you're thinking about if the batteries wear themselves out over the years, will they come to the point where they are just shutting themselves off? You know, I exactly would have to say that I've never been there before. And I've been owning electric cars, ones that are hand-built by me and some others, and, and regular professionally made cars. And I've never seen a battery pack get to the point where it's not giving any juice and would leave you in the lurch on the side of the road. Where they start taking a weaker charge as the batteries get older. Yes. Like I found that with a lot of my garden tools. But, you know, garden at first tools. they run two hours, and then I don't know what happens. Before you know it, they're running a half hour to 15 minutes, and they die. Right, you got a battery-powered... Uh, trimmer or something mm -hmm. like that to use it. I got one of those too. So. Right. Yeah. Apparently you mess up the battery's brains if you keep it plugged in. Yeah, there's some people who have that impression. Now, I'll say that I run, have run my weed whacker, that battery, right. 
until it was empty. But then I plug it in, charge it up, and it seems to have the same sort of performance it used to before. Uh, but after you're right, after a while, over time. But that's if you run it to empty. If you don't run it to empty and you plug it back in, it dysfunctions. Well, I've had great success with my weed whackers and they're lithium ion batteries. Right. Um, I don't usually run them all the way to dead. I try to you know, quit when I'm ready to quit, which means there's still some power left in that battery. And I'll plug it in and charge it up or top it off, if you will. And it seems to be working fine for me. But could be that your situation is different. I have my Dodge um, Charger, Daytona. A very nice machine. Yeah. And they're supposed to be going electric come 2024. Uh -huh. and, and that's what they claim. They're not going to lose any performance oh, power. Sure, and, they wouldn't want to admit that. Oh, yeah, this is the weak sister. <laughs> yeah. Any respectable car company is going to say this is just as good, if not better, right. than our product we had last year. Yeah. So it, that's what I'm looking for is the downfalls of electric. Well, the downfalls, if you want me to talk about them, I really don't prefer to talk about the downfalls, but there are some. Yeah. So if you're interested, I'm happy to continue the conversation about that. The downfalls are, like we were talking about, how long does it take to plug in to charge up? And if you're going to your cousin's house in the middle of Wyoming, and you're just plugging into the wall socket, it takes a while to get that sucker charged all and, the way And you want to leave their house because they're on your nerves. That's right. <laughs> Come on, charge. Don't stay around for any more than two days because you start smelling like fish. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one downfall is the time it takes to charge them. So there you go again. The people with them supercharges are going to make money. Yes. And the other uh, concern that some people have is not only does it take a little while to charge it up, but the battery gives you a range of, for example, in the case of the Chevy Bolt, 300 miles range or 250 miles range. Mm -hmm. Most of these cars around here will give you about that same kind of range. Other people might say, well, I want to just drive straight through the night like I do on my gas car and get 500 miles of gasoline distance, if you will. So they object to the fact that electric cars don't have as much fuel inside the vehicle to take it 500 miles on the charge. But, you know, there are auto manufacturers who are promising, you know, that next couple of years we're going to have batteries that are even better that will give you 500 miles on the charge. And the car is going to get heavier. Probably it'll get heavier and will not do as well on performance. But, you know, it may be that they'll find batteries that are lighter weight but more powerful at the same time. So the future is exciting. It, one of the things that I'm inter interested about electric like cars though, is the environmental impact, which we haven't really talked about. A lot of gasoline cars will drip oil out of their oil pan, and you'll see that oil on the sidewalk or on the parking lot, the asphalt or whatever, Vermont. outside of various places. It rains, and all of a sudden, all that oil turns into a rainbow. If you've ever seen that before, you'll know that we're dripping oil, which all flows out into the ocean eventually. So, I'm a clean water kind of guy, so I like electric cars in that sense. I don't have any oil changes or have to pay for oil changes and that sort of stuff, but I'm also not polluting the earth with either oil dripped into the water or and the oil smell. pollution goes burned up into the sky, making climate change, that sort of stuff. Yes, well, I keep hoping we'll, the future for my daughters is all clean power, yeah. no dirty power. And, and your grandchildren and so on. I can't think of anybody who's saying, oh yeah, when we get to be you know, 100 years from now, we're still going to be burning coal. No, I can't imagine anybody no. saying that. Most people understand. That's the past. The and, future and we are seeing an impact already. And, and people don't see, some people don't see that the impacts are already happening. The weather changes, fishermen the extremes. They used to be able to catch the certain kind of fish, and now they're all moved farther north. And there's these other fish that used to be down the south, are mm -hmm. coming up this way. And the seals, the sharks. Yeah. yeah. The uh, rosy spoonbill birds. My wife's a birder. She said, oh, yeah, they found those up here in uh, Dover someplace, or someplace northern Delaware, I guess, as opposed to where they're supposed to be down in Florida. They're a Florida bird, so yeah. So it's, yeah, it's happening. Yeah, it's already happening. And it's a challenge for us to be, uh, you know, like my parents were part of the greatest generation. You know, everybody was proud of them for doing the right thing. Now's our turn to be heroes. That's what the older people say. We need to go back to where we started because we're messing up. Yeah.